In this question, we are asked to evaluate the integral of the inverse sine of x. Now, of course, we could just look up in a table the integral for the inverse sine of x and be done with the problem. But the exercise here is intended for us to be using integration by parts in order to actually figure out the answer for ourselves. And we have boxed in the formula for integration by parts, which requires various items. We've actually made a template over on the side here in order to help keep us organized. So the first thing we need to do is establish what our u is going to equal. And oftentimes in integration by parts problems, there will be two functions that are being multiplied together. So you'd have to select which of those two functions would be your u. In this particular case, there's only one function. There's the inverse sine of x. And in those cases, when you're using integration by parts with a single function, all of the examples, at least that I can think of, would involve letting u equal that function. So in a nutshell, we're going to let u equal the inverse sine of x. And then we need the derivative, which is symbolized here by du. Now, many of us might remember from a calculus one course that the derivative of arc sine or inverse sine of a function is just the derivative of the function divided by the square root of one minus that function squared. So we're going to follow this rule for calculating the derivative of the arc sine of x. So we would need the derivative of x in the numerator, which would just be one. And then we would divide that by the square root of one minus our function squared. And again, our function here is x. So it would be one minus x squared. So there is the derivative and we could put the dx here for proper notation. On the other side, we would let dv normally equal the other function. Remember, most of these problems would involve two functions. Here we don't have that second function, so we're just gonna let it equal dx, or if you prefer, one dx would be appropriate. And then to go from dv to v, we don't do a derivative, of course, we do an integration. And the integral of one with respect to x is just x. So now we have the four pieces of our puzzle. We can now start plugging into the integration by parts formula, which again is given over here. So we would have the integral of our u, which we said was the inverse sine of x, times our dv, which we said was just one dx, or more simply dx. Notice this expression is the same as the original problem, of course. And then this is going to equal the u, which we said again was the inverse sine of x, multiplied by v, and we determined that v is just x. I prefer to put the x in front here, so it would look like that, it's just a little tidier. And then minus the integral of, once again, v, which we said was x, and then times du, which is this rather unfortunate expression. So we're going to multiply this by one all over the square root of one minus x squared dx. So far, so good, but now we have to evaluate this integral right here. Now to simplify it, in fact, we can multiply x times one, which will place that x into the numerator essentially. So we might wanna just tweak this a little bit and just make this x and then maybe slide this over. Now to evaluate this integral, it turns out that we would have to use another specialized technique known as u substitution. You probably learned this earlier in your current course or perhaps in a calculus one course. And we won't go through the detailed steps of that, but basically in u substitution, you typically let your u equal the inner function. So this one minus x squared could be considered an inner function because it's underneath a square root. So we'll let u equal it. And then we would take the derivative. So the derivative of one minus x squared is negative two x dx. And then what I like to do is solve the equation for dx. And to do that, we would divide both sides by negative two x. So we can see that du over negative 2x is equal to dx. Now, remember, we are in the midst of solving out this integral right here. So that should be our focus. We'll return to the main problem shortly. We would have the integral of x over the square root. Now, rather than putting one minus x squared in there, we're going to put u. That was the whole point of our u substitution. Times, and then rather than dx, we're going to put in what we had solved for for dx, so that was du over negative two x. Oftentimes in u substitution, your variable will cancel. So your variable x right here and here, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, they do in fact cancel. That would leave you with a one right here, 
And if you look very carefully, you would have a one over negative two. So you can actually factor that constant to the outside. We're gonna take that basically negative one half integral. And then notice we're left not with the square root of u, but with one over the square root of u. That square root of u was indeed in the denominator, but let's rewrite the one over the square root of u. Recall that the square root of u can be written as u to the half. And then furthermore, recall that u to the half, or excuse me, one over u to the half can be rewritten as u to the negative one half. And now we integrate, so we're gonna add one to the exponent, that's gonna become u to the positive half, and then multiply by the reciprocal of one half, which is two. And then you can see here, one half of two, those would cancel out, and you're left with negative u to the half. But recall, u, way back here, was one minus x squared. So you have negative parentheses, one minus x squared to the half. So that's not the answer to the question. That is the answer to this integral right here. So what we'll do for our final answer is rewrite it as such. So we have the integral of the inverse or arc sine of x dx equals x inverse sine of x and then minus the result which we just obtained, which was this negative one minus x squared to the half. And if you notice, you're about to subtract a negative one minus x squared to the half. And so this double negative right here will actually, of course, make it into a plus sign. So your final answer would be x arc sine of x plus one minus x squared to the power of a half. Don't forget your constant of integration, so you could write it like that. Alternatively, you could rewrite the one minus x squared to the power of one half as the square root of one minus x squared. And then again, don't forget your constant of integration. So either one of those forms of the answer would be appropriate.